If you're wondering why author Jennifer Morgan's face is sprinkled with stardust, there's a simple explanation. She's just returned from observing the birth of the universe, and as you might imagine, there's a lot of that stuff floating around out there. It took her quite a while to get here, but that gave her time to jot down the whole story, just as it was told to her by, you guessed it, the universe itself. And now she's here to tell you how the universe was born with a bang. My dearest Earthling, you may not know me. We haven't talked before. I am the universe, and it's time for us to get to know each other. After all, I'm 13 billion years old now give or take a few billion years. And how old do you think you are? Nine, 13? How about 13 billion years old too? You have never been separate from me. That's why I'm going to tell you a story about me, which is about you, too. There are many stories about how everything came to be. This story is based on the discoveries of earthling scientists. As they learn more, the story will change. I can't wait to share with you what I know so far. Now, my dear earthling, Make yourself comfortable, and let's begin at the very beginning. Once you were a tiny speck buried deep in the dark inside your mother. But you couldn't stay small. You grew and grew until one day you were ready to leave the darkness. On that very special day, your birthday, you were born into the light. I too had a special day when I was born. Like you, I started as a tiny speck. I was smaller than a piece of dust under your bed. It's hard to imagine that I started out so small, but I did. And if you ask me where I came from, I would tell you I don't know. It's the greatest of all mysteries. But there I was. Like you, I couldn't stay small. I was bursting with wild and dazzling dreams of galaxies, stars, and planets in radiant colors. Bright yellow, molten red, piercing blue. In other dreams, I saw strange creatures, fish cruising deep blue seas, insects, alighting on flowers, reptiles basking on hot rocks in the sun, <coughs> birds swooping down on their prey. And I saw you, too, gazing at stars. Could such amazing things really happen? I wondered. Oh, how I wanted my dreams to happen. But how could they? How could you happen? Then I suddenly realized I could be the things in my dreams. I could explode in a giant star, grow green in a thin blade of grass. Roar the lion! as a kitten. Feel feelings like love, sadness, and wonder. 
Ah, yes, it began to dawn on me. Everything would have to come out of me. There was no other way. And everything would be me. But I wondered, would I become worms with wings? Or foxes with fins? Or tulips with toes? Or boulders with brains? I was puzzled. What forms would I like best? I didn't know. What if I tried and ended up making a big mess? Even though I was just a tiny speck, I wanted to try. I decided to take the chance and do it. I summoned up all my courage and took my very first step. I burst into a grapefruit-sized fireball of a universe, packed with surging energy. It took only an instant. Space and time had just begun. I was so bright back then, I would have blinded you if you had eyes. But of course you didn't yet. I was so dense, I would have crushed your bones if you had bones back then. But of course, you didn't yet. I was so sizzling hot, I would have vaporized your muscles if you had muscles back then. But of course, you didn't yet. I couldn't hold myself at grapefruit size anymore. I was really ready to go for it now. In a flash, space exploded inside me with unimaginable power. Like a gargantuan balloon, I blew up to the size of a galaxy. And it happened faster than you can snap your fingers. After I blew up, I kept growing, but more slowly. I had to find the right speed for a universe. I could have died if everything had not been just right. If I had grown just a bit more slowly, my own gravity would have overpowered me and crushed me into nothingness. If I had grown just a bit more quickly, I would have blown apart and disappeared into nothingness. That would have been the end of our story. No galaxies, no turtles, and no you. But everything was just right. I was hardly a tidy young universe. If I had a human mother, she would have scolded me for all my clutter and confusion. And I'm not just talking about dirty socks on the cosmic floor. It was utter bedlam. When I was a fraction of a second old, I was already a mess. Hotter than one trillion degrees, I was blazing with the heat of billions of suns. Suddenly, gigantic glowing bolts of energy flashed everywhere and shrank into teensy things. Oh no, what had I done? Actually, I had done something incredible. Yes, I had turned energy into the very first things, tiny particles. Particles are the invisible bits of stuff that everything is made of. Maybe, just maybe, my dreams could come true. 
maybe I could turn myself into stars and grass and lions and kittens and tulips and boulders. Maybe I could be you too. But oh, blast, a frustrating thing kept happening. Every time I turn energy into a particle, its exact opposite, an antiparticle would appear. These pairs weren't friendly. In fact, they were enemies that destroyed each other every time they met. I had barely begun my adventure and already I was out of control. Two sides were at war, yet both were part of me. In the beginning, they were equally matched and kept zapping each other. So I made more, billions more. And then, amazingly, for every billion particles that were zapped by antiparticles, I was able to make one extra particle that survived. The particles were winning, so I made more and more and more. Then I stopped. I had enough basic bits of stuff to build myself into the universe you know today. And guess what? The number of these particles has stayed the same ever since. Everything, including your body, is made out of those very same particles that I made long, long ago. Young particles raced around and around inside me, dizzily tumbling and crashing into one another like kids playing on a couch. By the time I was 300,000 years old, I was pretty cool. Only about 3,000 degrees. Bunches of particles joined together and morphed into very different things. They were small but very important. They were kind of like Lego pieces, building blocks that I could use later for making bigger things. I had made my very first atoms. They were atoms of hydrogen. Was I proud? of creating hydrogen atoms. You bet I was. I was just a kid universe and already I had hit my first home run. You would have cheered me on if you had a voice back then. But of course you didn't, not yet. Hydrogen, hydrogen atoms are still really important to me. Every gulp of water that slides down your throat is made of hydrogen that was created by me billions of years ago. Of course, back then, there was no water. Not yet. The hydrogen fog began to ripple and clump together into wavy strings. Gravity pulled these strings together into globs. As the globs got bigger, the gravity got stronger, which made the globs get even bigger. The bigger they got, the hotter they got. Then, wow! One of my dreams began to come true. These enormous hydrogen globs started igniting into mother stars. One here one there. Soon there were huge mother stars everywhere, 
gigantic groups of mother stars spiraled in space. I was shaping myself into galaxies. There were billions of galaxies, each with billions of stars, spinning and sparkling like jewels in the black night. In the center of your Milky Way, my gravity became so powerful that it turned into a black hole. Oh no, everything near the black hole, stars, dust clouds, and even light got trapped and sucked in. It all swirled down into the black hole's mysterious dark depths, just as water swirls down and disappears into a bathtub drain. Where did all that stuff go? Is it stuck inside? Or are black holes really secret passageways into other universes? All that stuff has to be somewhere because nothing ever really disappears. Mind you, my dear Earthling, your Milky Way is one tiny neighborhood in my vast expanse. Even though your galaxy is very special to me, I care equally for all my galaxies. Every one of them is part of me. In fact, they all are me. In one of the Milky Way's spiraling arms, one mother star, very important to you, grew into a shimmering, majestic giant. She lived long before your son was born and was much, much bigger than your son. Inside her enormous, blazing belly, she did something incredible. Your mother star mixed together bunches of hydrogen and baked them at three billion degrees into lots of new and different elements. One was carbon. One day, carbon, chains of carbon called DNA would carry instructions from one generation to the next. Another was oxygen. One day oxygen would combine with hydrogen to make one of my most magnificent things, water. And where would you be without oxygen to breathe and water to drink? Another was calcium. Calcium can be really hard stuff. How useful for making bones. Every atom of these elements was fused inside a colossal mother star. Was I proud of her new elements? You bet I was. Before your own star could be born, the one you call the sun, your mother star had to die. Your mother star ripped herself apart in a massive explosion, a supernova. Tiny specks of carbon, oxygen, and calcium, and all the other new building blocks she made blasted into space and cooled into stardust. Her stardust was the same stardust 
that would one day come together to create you. You are made of stardust. Every bit of it exploded from your ancient mother star who no longer lives. I was about seven billion years old when she died. Inside the cloud of stardust, a little gravity tugged from each speck, making them gently stick together in little clumps. The little clumps clumped together into bigger clumps. The bigger clumps crashed into each other and stayed together. They swirled into a disk shape, faster and faster, hotter and denser, tighter and brighter, until finally, whoosh, your sun flared into life. Born to from the clumps of stardust were nine young planetary pups. The planets tagged along after father's son, but they were smaller and had no light of their own. Planets depend on the sun's generosity, just as human children depend on their parents for food and shelter. Oh, how I delighted as your sun sent light and warmth to its planets. By now you know everything within me is giving and receiving. To use human language, you might say that I the universe am loving myself through everything that is playing and working together, even the tiny particles teaming up to form you. There I go again, talking about earthlings long before they existed. Do you want to know what has always propelled my adventure forward? It's giving and receiving, and it's playing and working together. The third pup inside the young planetary pack, your Earth, was a burning red ball of molten stardust. She was a high energy young pup cruising around your sun, erupting volcanoes, spewed steam and other gases. The steam turned to rain, vast oceans. Other gases rose up and became the air. Lightning storms zapped her seas with energy. Meteors and comets crashed into her for millions of years. Slowly, slowly, she cooled down and formed a firm, crusty surface hungry young planet she was. She drank light and warmth from her golden sun, her source of life in the midst of cold, dark space. Sun and Earth began their rhythmic dances of day and night, spring, summer, fall, and winter. The ocean bubbled and boiled. 
Hot red rocks oozed up through rips in the ocean floor. What would I, the universe, turn myself into next? This was exciting. I remembered my wild and dazzling dreams of galaxies and stars and planets. Now I had them. Or maybe I should say, now I was them. But wait, I remembered another dream too. I remembered creatures slicing through water, creeping on plants, crawling on rocks, soaring on winds, and gazing at stars. You were there too. Oh, how I long to become creatures, including you. Would this be a good place for creatures to begin to twitch and multiply? Did I have enough building blocks to turn myself into creatures? Ah, uh, let's see. I had made hydrogen a long, long time ago. And inside mother stars, I had made carbon, oxygen, calcium, and a whole bunch of other building blocks. And then I had brought hydrogen and oxygen together to form water. Maybe I was ready. Of course, dear Earthling, my story, our story, doesn't end here. So much still had to happen before I could turn myself into you. In my next story, your planet Earth comes alive. But that will have to wait for another day. Until we talk again, I send you my very best from the cosmos. Remember, I am always with you. My sweet Earthling, I will tell you a secret. I am even closer to you than that. It's true. I am you.